My name is Joel Salinas. I'm a neurologist and a person with multiple forms of synesthesia. My brain can perceive motion as sound, music as color, taste as shapes. A bite into a strawberry turns my world into a splash of aqua filled with the sound of crashing cymbals. The clarinet of Rhapsody in Blue evokes a slithering, serpentine figure at the base of my tongue that tastes like blueberries perfumed with fresh tire tread. Hugs make me feel cool, silvery blue. This is not a drug-induced daydream. This is my reality. About 4% of the general population have at least one form of synesthesia. But one of the forms of synesthesia I possess is mirror touch, which exists in 1-2% to of all people. My brain automatically tries to recreate the sensory experience of other people, as if I am them and they are me. I can become inextricably entangled in others, their pleasure, their pain, their needs at the expense of losing myself. In my first relationship with a college girlfriend, it wasn't long before I lost myself. I cohabited two bodies. Her attempts at making me happy were only successful if she, too, found enjoyment in these moments. Her constant fear of abandonment took form in me as a damp tangle of dark indigo and lavender clumps with strands of blue and white fibers sticking out of it. Breaking up with her felt like an amputation. Everyone possesses the neurologic equipment for mirror touch. When you see someone faceplant, you cringe. That's due to the brain's mirror system, this secondhand sense of touch. For people like me, our mirror systems are larger and much more active than the average person. Since childhood, my trait has required a monastic dedication to the physical and mental labor of filtering these tides of sensory information. But I've had lots of practice, especially as a doctor. The first time I saw a man whose heart suddenly stopped beating, I felt compression after compression in his chest and mine. My vocal cords tightened as Doctor slid a breathing tube down his throat. I lay there with him, dead. When I was a medical student in the trauma center, an unconscious homeless man was brought in. I immediately felt a cold stillness in my left arm. Below my shoulder, I felt wet, sinewy strands and clumps of shredded muscle. His arm had been severed by a passing train. I had to focus on the surgical supplies cabinet with its neat rows of tubes and tubs wrapped in sterile packaging just to soothe my rogue sensations. I took two long, deep breaths and catapulted right back into action. Mirror touch hasn't stopped me from living a full life. Today, I specialize in behavioral neurology. I've been studied by world-renowned neuroscientists, cared for thousands of patients, lived through a brain tumor and a car crash, explored the Amazon rainforest, and written a book. Whenever a patient dies, I feel as if I've died too. In this regard, I've died many times. Mirror touch has helped me develop a heightened state of empathy, literally putting myself in another person's shoes. With mirror touch, I've cultivated a greater awareness of our shared humanity and a truer sense of where we all begin and where we all end.